Hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is Nikki here. So today I have this makeup look for you. This is an in-depth tutorial on my base makeup. I felt like it was really important for me to have this on my channel because skin is everything. So I could basically put on mascara and I'd be good to go. I think once your skin looks immaculate, anything you put on top of that is a bonus. Now I know that I've got videos like this and I might be repeating myself a little bit, on my channel but this is an in-depth tutorial and I'm teaching you the ways of why I do what I do and why I don't do what I don't do if that sort of makes sense and also what products just work for me and how to get rid of these bad boys under here and the darkness around here so if you want to see how I achieved this base makeup and learn a thing or two about how to do base makeup for particularly a brown skin then just keep on watching so I think it's always a good job to start off just by assessing your skin with a darker skin you tend to have pigmentation you tend to get dark spots dark circles hyperpigmentation all of that fun stuff and it's just important to look at your skin and see what do you need to correct, which bits are darker, which bits are lighter. If you look at my skin, the outskirts of my face are very, very slightly a little bit darker and especially around my mouth area is probably the darkest part of my face along with underneath my eyes and on top of my eyes as well. I am blessed. But we can correct all of this. Also, what I've noticed about my skin is that this area around here is very dark and then my neck is dark but I go back into light on my chest so I have a lot of different colors going on and it's just important to create a really nice blank canvas and that's what I'm going to share with you guys today skincare is a major important step in wanting your skin to look good so what I'm going to do is I struggle a little bit with skincare what I'm going to do just to prep my skin before we add foundation and start adding the makeup is I'm going to moisturize my skin is more of a dehydrated skin which means it feels tight but it doesn't get flaky so it's not dry I just like to have it very nice and plump so I'm going to be using the benefit triple performing facial emulsion moisturizer I'm going to take a couple of pumps of this and then I'm going to moisturize this all over the face and the neck area next I like to use a strobing cream this can be anything from a MAC gold light to the Becca illuminating primer anything that has reflex in it because I like more of like a dewy satin finish if you've got an oilier skin type sometimes maybe some of you girls or guys want to go for a matte finish I will probably opt out of the strobing effect but for mine I'm going to be using the CYO illuminating mixing cream in turn on the light I like to use just a little bit of this all over and it just gives my skin a really nice healthy look so I'm going to take a pump of this and then just massage this and mix it in to that moisturizer that we've just popped on now we're going to move on to foundation and now looking at my skin I like to match a lighter foundation to the lighter area of my skin and then a darker foundation to the darker areas of my skin which are usually just the outskirts what I actually like to do is I like to go with lightweight foundations nothing too heavy or full coverage because it's easier to blend that out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my benefit this is the hello happy soft blur foundation in the shade number six this perfectly is more of a satin finish more of like a smoothing effect and is the color of the majority of the skin on my face which is in the center and then what I want to do is I'm going to use the MAC face and body now the MAC face and body in C6 matches my darker areas and matches me when I've got a tan perfectly but it is very 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 lightweight so I can either put this all over the face to kind of tan me up and bronze me up a little bit and make everything look seamless or I can just put it in the outskirts of the skin where it is a little bit darker for more of a natural look so using my Benefits Hello Happy Soft Blur Number no. 6 foundation, I'm just going to pop this on a beauty blender and then I'm just going to concentrate this foundation in the centre area of my face, avoiding any dark areas just because we don't need any greyness and this is just going to go in the centre for my foundation. So I hope you guys can see on camera that this Benefit foundation has like a smoothing effect to it, it's so nice and it perfectly matches the brighter areas of my skin but if you look at my chin area, it's a lot darker there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my MAC face and body in the shade C6 and then I'm going to use this on the beauty blender and pop it on all the outskirts of my face and around my mouth area just to warm everything up I also like to take the C6 down my neck area just because my neck's a little bit darker and onto my chest just to make sure that everything is honestly just one blank canvas now I would always recommend depending on the cut of your top of course just take your foundation down anyway because if you are getting photos taken 
you can see the foundation regardless of how flawless it looks and if it matches you can see it in photos that it just looks so flawless and then the chest area you can see like real real skin moving on to dark circles they are the bane of my life and i've guess i've tried so many different things to cover up dark circles i've done the orange corrector i've done the mixing the two concealers together but what actually just works for me and it sounds pretty simple is using a heavy duty concealer use a high coverage concealer in the shade which is closest to your under eye so that would be my brighter area right here in a thick coverage and it will cover it and that's what works the concealer that i absolutely love for this is the Too Faced born this way more to use sculpting concealer and you guys know that i will always tell you about a concealer that i love time and time again if i love it and i've used this so many times it's just a high coverage concealer you can do different ways but this is the way that i would recommend and i would most definitely recommend this concealer for your under eye dark circles so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pop a little bit of this underneath my eye area and then i'm going to start blending that out using a damp beauty blender just blending it out very slowly underneath my eyes and then taking the excess on to the top of my eyelids as well because i have a lot of smoke going on there just so we can counteract all of the darkness going on around our eyes now this concealer is literally like magic it is a lifesaver you can see that my dark circles have just vanish like i don't know they've just gone what i used to do what i had been doing what i've just recently started doing and switching it up is i used to use this concealer around my mouth area as well because i obviously have a little bit of a complex about this area and i want to get rid of the darkness i can still see it but what i was finding is because this was a little bit brighter it would sometimes make around my mouth area look brighter or a little bit ashy so what i now use is i've gone back to the mac pro longwear concealer this is in the shade nc45 now it is a lot darker for me but it's got that orange corrector kind of tone to it and so i like to just use this cover this concealer it's a very high coverage so only a little bit and then I pop this just around my mouth area just to counteract any greyishness or any darkness and just colour correct this mouth area. Okay, now that that's done, I'm feeling pretty good about my base makeup. I feel like it all looks worn up tone and I'm happy with all the colour correcting that I've done. I think it's important just for me to note, I don't really know why I do this, but it works for me, is when I use a beauty blender, you can see the rest of my beauty blender is all, the majority of it is all clean. And every time I pick up a new colour, whether that be a highlight colour or whether it just be the darker colour, I always use the same side. I feel like I do that just because I want all my foundations to kind of mix together and I feel like if I use a clean side, then you're solely going to get a lot of the darker product. I don't know if I'm making sense here, but that's how I like to also blend in my highlight is with the darkness from my foundation and blend in my highlight. So it's not ever too bright and it, everything kind of just melts in to the base makeup if that makes sense now you can of course just leave your makeup like this call this your base routine and then move on to eyes and lips and kind of finish off but because i'm a little bit extra i like to highlight and contour and i like to add a little bit of dimension to my face sometimes depending on what look i'm doing i like to go for a really strong highlight underneath and then i've got to compromise by bronzing the skin up a little bit more for highlighter i like to use something creamy so something very liquidy something creamy nothing too dry creamy like i find the fenty matchsticks i like the contour but i find the highlight of that is a bit too i don't know like dry and hard for my liking so i like it wet and for my highlight today i'm going to be using the revolution this is a fast base so it's their foundation stick in the shade f6 i like this one because it's got a yellow undertone to it and i think for a brown skin a yellow is always really going to brighten it and just lift the area so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pop this highlighter stick underneath my eyes in a downward triangle i'm also going to take this down the center of my face across my brows and do my chin and my upper lip as well just so everything is cohesive and it is brightened everywhere just not in one area once my highlight is all on i'm just going to blend it out again using that same beauty blender now I always look a little bit crazy after highlight because I tend to go a little bit lighter with my highlight. I get this question a lot, like a lot, a lot, and it's such a good question. And I questioned it myself and I tried it out and it didn't work for me. A lot of people ask me, why do I layer my concealers? If I was gonna go in with a highlighter concealer that is of a high coverage, why wouldn't I just go in with the lighter colors straight off the bat on my darker circles? And it's such a good question and in theory it should work, but for me, it just doesn't work it doesn't work i don't like the coverage i don't like the ashiness if i just put down a lighter concealer first 
without putting down something that is the same colour as my skin. Now I don't know if that's just me, it just doesn't seem to work and it could just be because my dark circles are quite highly pigmented that they need a little bit of cover up first anyway. But depending on what, how dark your pigmentation is, I would suggest trying it. I always think that it's better to correct and then to brighten afterwards. Now before we go into any bronzing, I wanna just add a little bit of contour. I don't always do this, but this is just an extra step. I'm gonna be using the Fenty Beauty. This is a matchstick in truffle. I like it because it is a little bit drier. So it is gonna sit in a place. It's not gonna move about so much like the highlighter or our cream bronzer that we're gonna do. I like this just to really sit in my cheekbone area and I like to do my cheekbones just for my face shape and then bronze everything else up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this stick in the shade Truffle and I'm just going to apply a line straight down just to chisel our cheekbones and then use a brush just to slowly and gently buff that out to give us a little bit of structure to our face. Now with contour I would suggest always brushing upwards, never downwards because you don't want to lose this line. This is the line that creates that shadow and you don't wanna lose that. I also don't like to highlight underneath here. I know a lot of people do it, but they take the highlighter and they clean this up. I just feel like for me, it starts to look ashy again. And I like to just leave it the skin color that we put down for the foundation. And it works a lot better for me. I'm actually gonna use a little bit of the Fenty just to contour my nose a little bit because I've been liking that look recently. Even though I don't need to contour my nose or I'm not trying to make it look smaller, I just like the definition that it gives to it. So I'm gonna take the Fenty Beauty Matchsticks, just run it down the sides of my nose and a little bit into the upper bit of my brow. And then I'm gonna take this Iconic London HD brush and just buff that out very gently. You know, I always wondered when people contour their nose where that color went because I always used to just blend it like a line and then it just didn't look nice but I've recently discovered that they must be blending it down like this to really chisel that nose out because it's really subtle but it does add a lot of difference in photos especially now this step is completely optional it's a little bit extra you don't need to do it but I like to do it, I just feel like it creates a base for my powders to stick on top of and I'm going to cream bronze. I'm going to be using the Pigment Stick by Iconic London, it's my absolute favourite, in the shade 5.1. Just because I really like the colour of it and it is very, very strong, you need the smallest amount. So I'm just going to add a couple of lines everywhere that I would like to cream bronze, usually in this kind of three shape area, so that would be on my cheekbones, on my temple area and on my jawline. I'm just going to add a little bit of cream bronzer there and then I'm going to buff that out using a like kind of like a fluffy brush, this is a Real Techniques brush just to get this really blended nicely in to the skin. So now I'm happy with all of my wet products and my cream products, I'm going to move on to powder. Now, I usually start off by powdering and not baking but just setting my under eyes in place before I start doing any powder on the cheeks because I don't want to move anything around in terms of liquid underneath the eyes. The powder that I have been loving, and loving so much, but I know it's hella expensive, is this is the Givenchy, the Prisma Libre. I don't know how to pronounce that. It is too fancy for me. It is in the shade 5 Satin Blanc, and it's got these four different colours to it. It's more of like an illuminating powder, I've found, and it works amazingly underneath my eyes. It just makes my under eyes look so, so flawless. So I'm going to take just a little bit of this, and then I like to take a fluffy brush and just pat it, just dab it. Don't buff because I don't want to move all that liquid underneath that we spent so much time doing just to cover up our dark circles. Just pat it and let the powder absorb into the liquid and it will create a really nice flawless finish. Now I don't know if you guys can see a difference but I can see that it looks super smooth underneath my eyes. And I'm very careful when I use powders. Like I don't like using powders just because they can really destroy your makeup look super quickly. So you just want to be super careful with it. Now the powder's down, I'm going to just bronze me up very slightly, just set that cream or bronzer in place. I'm going to be using the MAC Give Me Sun. This is an all-time favourite, I love the BH Cosmetics Contour Palette, but like anything that's orangey, anything with a ready undertone is what I love for a brown skin tone, just to warm up. So I'm just going to use that same brush that we used to cream blend with and just pop this everywhere that we've pop the cream just to set it in a place and just to strengthen our bronzer a little bit as well. Something I've also been doing recently is I dab the bronzer on. I dab it on top of the cream to let the powder soak in and then I will go in and buff. Just because sometimes, because I like to layer products and because my products are very much wet and take a long time to settle down, the powder can move them. 
and that's why I'll just pat and then I go ahead and buff. Now solely because I can't live without a little bit of highlighter, I'm going to be using the Technic Mega Glow Highlighter Palette. I'm going to take the two gold shades at the bottom, mix them together, and my highlighter brush of choice is a Morphe M510 brush. I'm going to add just a little bit to the tops of my cheekbones and a tiny bit down the centre of my nose, just to give me that added extra glow. Now that I'm happy with my base, I'm just going to clean up my brows ever so quickly for you guys using my MAC Spiked Eyebrow Pencil. I am just going to keep them quite natural, but just fill them in and clean them up just so you can get a good look at the overall base. I'm going to set the brows up really quickly just because I like the texture that it gives to my brows using the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel. I'm just going to brush this little bad boy through both my brows. And now lastly, I'm just going to spray a little bit of Tarte's Rainforest of the Sea, the 4-in-1 facial mist, just to let everything kind of settle into my skin and get rid of any powder residue. And that, guys, is it. That is how I do my base makeup. That's how I get rid of my hyperpigmentation. It's how I get rid of my dark circles. And I guess that's how I cater to more of a brown skin because it can be a little bit tricky and it's different. It just is different. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I had so much fun at making it. I'm sorry if I rambled a little bit. I'm sorry if things have been repeated in past videos. I just wanted to really do an in-depth tutorial on my base makeup because I know how important it is to you guys. And it's just important to me. I love doing them and I love trying new products. And yeah, I'm really happy with my base makeup. Let me know what you think of it down below. Give this video a thumbs up. And subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is also down below. And I'll see you in my next video. Mwah.